There are several products or compounds that are being looked at in the context of treatment, first of all, one of which we have here in two clinical trials uh, with a drug called remdesivir, which is an antiviral. It actually kills the virus. It is unfortunately something that has to be given intravenously, but it is such that uh, we're studying that in conjunction with Gilead Pharmaceuticals, and we have two types of trials here. One is in moderate disease, and uh, the other is in very severe disease. The latter could include patients in the intensive care unit. There are some other antiviral agents, one of which is produced in Japan and was used in China during the outbreak there. That is in pill form, and I think uh, we'll be seeing perhaps more studies along those lines. And for our sickest individuals, particularly with significant lung involvement, we have uh, a chance to modulate or mitigate the very severe immune response, and it's called a pro-inflammatory cytokine storm where this actually activates our own immune system, so to speak, the infection does. And this participates in the disease manifestations. This is with a monoclonal antibody against a product called IL-6, interleukin-6, and that generally is part of this cytokine storm that I talked about, IL-6 being one of those cytokines. There's been a lot of discussion in some ongoing trials right now of the use of an old anti-malaria medication called chloroquine, and it's kissing cousin, which is used in rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, called hydroxychloroquine. And there was a report out about its effectiveness, but only in 20 patients out of France, and it, it really did demonstrate that they could get rid of the virus in respiratory secretions after about four days uh, in that combination, uh, using those drugs as well as a common antibiotic called azithromycin, most people know this as a ZPAC, uh, but that was very effective. What they didn't measure in that study was the clinical resolution. So there are studies that are ongoing not only for treatment, but potentially for uh, prevention. And in fact, chloroquine, which I mentioned, has been used in the past for prevention and treatment of malaria. Uh, but there are side effects, and I think we need to understand that this is not necessarily something to, to jump on the bandwagon uh, for until such time as we have these clinical trials to show not only safety, but uh, certainly efficacy. There is another approach that's being taken that had been uh, done in the setting of Ebola, as well as the 2009 pandemic influenza time period, and in other infectious diseases where we take the blood from individuals who have recovered and are convalescent uh, with regard to their infection, purify out the antibodies, and then develop a, a, a process whereby we give those antibodies to somebody else with all the safety guidelines in place to make sure that's uh, okay to do, including their blood type and a number of other things. But uh, that has worked before. And uh, that's being uh, conducted initially through Johns Hopkins University and will be part of that study as well. And then a whole slew of other approaches. Other uh, immunologic agents are being uh, developed here uh, in this context to see if this can work.